What are you doing out here? Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Cauldron. Oh. <laughs> sorry, I'll just turn this off. I'm sorry. What are you doing out here? Casting spells? Yeah. Got that Jeep engine in this 55 gallon drum of uh, alkaline degreaser. It's a Zep product. It's made to dilute. So it's a concentrate. And I was looking around, I thought, hey, that engine will fit right in there. So I got the heater on it. And I just keep raising it up, blowing out the oil passages, giving it a little scrub here and there, and it's really coming back. Uh, in the cylinders, I've been using a little hone now and then. Remember how beat up those were, so mm -hmm. they're coming back. They're going to be okay. So that's good news. This engine will run, for better or worse. Getting all the, getting all the bad juju. Yeah, I'm all the soak. years. Let's soak for a few days with the heat on, but because of the sound, I'll leave the heater off for today. She's getting a spa week. What are we filming? A little more bug. This is the last day of this because I want to get to some other projects for the moment. Just get the side view of this car established. Uh, I got these ETA manufacturing wheel lifts, wheel stands, and they work super cool for this. This is when the product was introduced to me. This is what I was thinking of. So many lowered cars I work on, and now you can see at full drop, at full lowered ride height, I can scoot under there, no problem. So for body work or for this running board that we're going to fabricate, I can go under, inside, and around with ease. And I will drop the link to the product where you can buy it in the description. And I think there's a promo code. If it's not active, uh, we brought these to SEMA in November. So if the promo code is not active, maybe message with them. We're going to, today is Saturday. So on Monday, we're going to get in touch with them. I just had these down at Victor's because they were using them. And this is our first time back in the shop. So... <laughs> You haven't seen Victor since SEMA. SEMA's November. It's January 20th or something. So, yeah. But uh, you'll see. They're awesome. Uh, I'll do a little demo if you want. I was watching the demo video today from SEMA, and I'll also drop that on our video. But it made me, I dare I say, it made me miss SEMA a little bit and all of our SEMA friends. It's cool, it's just so high paced. <laughs> it's a week of everybody getting some right now. I do remember how tired I was when I was watching it, but uh, yeah, it's, it's such a cool video. I'll definitely post it in, in this. So the cool thing about these in comparison to a lot of the wooden blocks you see, these are adjustable. So to lift the car up to this height would be somewhat difficult with a jack stand that only goes a certain height. So you can see it's a two stage system. You'll only have to lift the car up to this height to get it on the tool, right? And then you just take these pins, index them, and they automatically lock in when it reaches the height. So, then you drop it. And these are not bargain basement items. These are pro grade. Uh, they're built with these awesome sleeves inside. I assume they'll last forever, barring you don't get them dented or rusty. So, it's good stuff. A lot of people ask about, hey, are you going to finish that running board? Yeah, of course, but we don't have fiberglass, so we're going to make them out of steel. I got this sheet of 20 gauge. I already started fiddling around with it while waiting for our illustrious editor-in-chief so I could come up with a formula. So we're going to work through this reasonably quick cooking show style. I got this panel, right? See how it's got this detail here? I love this. I don't want to lose that through the entirety. So this line's going to come through and turn up onto this rear fender. You can see how I made that out of steel. Camera getting that little bead. Yes. Okay, so we got two different radius of bends. This one you can see is very tight. And this one's a little bit rounder. 
and then we have the detail of the body line. So let's get into how all that happens. TV magic? A little bit. This part is, but now we're actually gonna build it. 20 gauge sheet. Um, I took the good piece out of it. It's a little dented. This thing uh, in our windstorm took a, took a tour around the property. So you can see it's pretty smashed up. Oops. It was stored in the <laughs> breezeway over there. And uh, yeah, the gusting gust took it. It's laying out there somewhere, rusting. So forgive a little bit of dirt. Gonna put a hem edge, but I'm not gonna close it. Uh, on the last piece of the fender, I made the hem and I closed it, but this is gonna be even a little bit stronger because it is a running board. I'm going to have to step on it to get in the car. So there'll be a structure below it. And I want that to stay really strong. That's gonna be a one half inch hem. Chuck this in the sheet metal brake and begin. All right, what I always do with this brake it's not perfect it's not perfectly straight so i just center myself and the material on it and i know from habit that this lip here is just about five eighths so i want a half inch hem and i'm just eyeballing it because it's not important it's under the car as long as it's even shut that and uh, i'm going to close this pan all the way to this angle and that's where we're going to finish nice push right into it probably been down that row before but see it's nice and straight as long as I don't bend it like that <laughs> nice and straight cool that's the first step now we're gonna look at this fender and compare a lot of people doing proper layout and math would measure but I don't think we need to because we can compare this that's gonna be the bottom right there and we're looking at this right here All right we're gonna go right to there this is going to be folded on the underside because we want we want this surface to turn in and then up a little bit so we're going to be folding this way i'm going to transfer that mark to this side so we can see it in the tool like so i'm going to measure that mark from the outside edge and it is just under one inch so we're gonna come over here, push this in to just under one inch. And I mean, not even a sixteenth, a smidge. Yeah, I'm gonna take this and just hit it. I don't know, about maybe that much. Just enough to put a little line in it. All right. Nice, this, the fine line. I'm gonna put it back in. See, I flipped it. I bent it this way up. Now I'm gonna put it back in. Bring it just to the other side. See the mark? That was the mark I made. So we want it to have a little bit of a radius bend. So I'm pulling it just to the top side of that mark. I'm gonna duplicate that here. Again, just my eyeball. You can look right down and that gap looks even. It's even. I'm gonna kick it. See, this is bending down a little bit. I want it just about horizontal. See what I was saying about the tool? This side did come out the same. Look, see how up this is? That's the challenge with these old tools. You gotta know them. So it's gonna be easier for me to push that side down than lift this one up. So I'm going to use the tool to raise this one to where it needs to be. And just set that down a little bit by hand. With the big bopper. The flapper. Hmm? The flapper, right? Something like that. I call it a flapper. You call it a flapper. So see, it's not perfectly straight, but we have a defined bead now. So I'm going to want to flatten this area where it's imperfect and put it back in here. I'm going to set it all the way back in. Give it a little action. There it is. 
I like that. Nice bead all the way down. I like it too. Looks good. Second part, we're going to go back and compare. Okay, so see now we have that detail falling straight through. But we're going to want a radius bend through here. So I'm going to say from about there to about there. Probably even a little bit tighter. I'm going to transfer those lines to the back side again because we're going to want to turn around the corner. So I'm going to go from there to there. All right, so with a sheet metal break, you have to work from the deepest, the material being as deep in the tool as possible because you'll get trapped. You won't be able to uh, insert some of the worked part of it into it because it'll want to smush that. So you always got to be thinking about doing things without your dyslexia intact. It only goes in and out one way. So putting it to this first mark with the material being pushed all the way into it, it should be yeah, just under one and a half. Come over to this side and that's just a little bit off. My friend Cassidy, who I haven't seen in years, he used to work in the shop when we were just starting out. and He'll tell you the story about this tool. Hey, Cassidy. There used to be a handle on here, like the other side. It's on these wheels. Cassidy grabs it by the handle and pulls it thusly, tipping the entire machine over. <laughs> Oh my. These wheels go whoop. This thing hits him. He goes like this and it hits him in the legs and he goes whoop, across the whole shop. No insurance, no nothing. He lived to tell the tale. Good work, sir. You got away with it. True stories. Be careful out there, folks. So the handle remains broken to this day. Broken handle. We have to get the forklift to pick this thing back up on its wheels. What's up, Frank? So we got this in there. Story time's over. We're going to pull this just a bit, just to get it started. Maybe about that much, 30 degrees, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's cold today. We're going to pull it out just a bit more. It's going to be about a one eighth of an inch radius or so. So I'm just showing that line here a little bit. I'm gonna pull it up again. Almost there to 90 degrees. And then out to the last mark. Right there. So it's a three step bend. And I'll show you what that gives us in the end. Gives us a nice rounder radius. It's not as tight as the other one on the lower end. So now we have this really large blanked out piece that matches the detail on that fender. And we do have a definite left and right side. So I'll show you now where I ended up with the first piece. This is gonna be the passenger side. So it's going to be flipped and oriented over there. This is the driver's side that I started on, that I was just showing. Now we're in the game. The side of the bug isn't flat. It's got a, it's got a curve that comes out like that. Whereas the sheet metal brake and the end of the running board will be straight and flat. So what I did was I just laid this up on top and I traced, I just, I just traced right around and I already did a cut. You can see the curve starting to come in already. The fitment. Right, it's getting close. Next, I'm going to cut out for this fender. So I just traced it. All right. 
bring it over there and cut it out. All right, today is orange product endorsement day. So uh, <laughs> the iMuffs, iMuffs.com, you can check them out. Uh, they're here. They're in the port of LA, I assume, and they're on their way to Mojave. So stand by. We get a lot of people asking about it. They're really cool. You put them on like this or like this. See, they're adjustable, right? So you can start them out large like I would be. There's a little top on them because they swivel. So you look at top, you put it on, you just pull them in. Super easy. So stand by. They're on the way. And you, you can wear glasses them underneath them. They don't fog up. Nothing too strict on the first fit up because we still have a bit more adjusting to do. See, I have it overlapped on the front fender. Plenty of room to mess around with. Now the back is reasonably close. Uh, I want this to be flush mounted with the outside of this fender so that this nice little line will turn up. That'll be all filler work. So we are about that much out. On both sides, look at that, it's even. So I'm gonna make a mark. Make this mark. All right? No, nope. incorrect. It's a lot less over here. Right there, like that. It was hanging up on the door skin, so yeah, we want about that much here. I'll make this mark and this mark, it's the innermost one. All right, so that's our gauge on the outside of the body. We just close this actually and just keep that even. Right there. So here, we only need to come in about three eighths of an inch. But here, looks like a good inch, inch and a half. Guesstimation. One and three eighths, so yeah. Cool. So, from there, we want to come in one and three eighths. Oh, that's right there. And then here, we only want to come in three eighths. That's where this weird little uh, line system is interesting. This is the apex of it. So I'm going to follow this pretty much to there. But then here, we're only going to go to the 3 eighths mark. Like that. And this I'm going to cut in the Beverly shear because I got straight lines. You might be wondering which line I'm going to follow. You have quite a few there. Well, they're all reference points, but I'm looking at the exact straight ones, not the curved ones. And once you start on a line, it's not really difficult to get confused. You just follow the one you're following. Get to the high point. Or the apex of that. And we're going at the three eighths on the straight shot right there. Yeah, that one comes right in. I 
I suppose anybody could have used acetone or something else to take all those lines off, but I just look right through them. If you had to transfer this work to another person, they would be lost in the process. Not this guy. Any day now. Yeah, let's see. There it is. Cool. I like it. I like it. I think it looks amazing. I'm pretty stoked. Yeah, it, like, wow. Okay, I'm gonna get a clamp and hold that up there. We're gonna work on that join. All right, so surface height is everything. So we're going to engage in discussion on the front fender join. Yeah. So we got this pretty big overlap of fiberglass and steel from approximately this point here, because I'm looking at the fender underneath. So I'm gonna cut off this little lip. Unless I can do it. Maybe I can do what I did on the other one. I can slice up through here and let this go inside. Ooh, let's try that. That's going to be way stronger. Yeah. Uh, on this, there's like a dead end right here. So I'm going to cut in with the disc a little notch so that this can slip through like that. And then they'll be like sandwiched together. Just might work. And the material is only 20 gauge, but through the bottom here, we're going to need a little clearance in this just to get through. See, just about that much. So the thickness of that steel doesn't bring it lower. work so can, does this uh, show it well see how it's gonna it's gonna take it in I think so that into shape. Cool old hammer, right? Chicago, you know something about that mm -hmm. town. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, that is a really cool hammer. All right, so we're gonna set this in place and see what happens. Let it come forward about a good inch. Side. That's what's giving us the stress.
All right, so it's gonna be a little massaging right through here. Uh, I don't mind if this is very straight up, like it transforms the line a bit, but we do need it to match. This is a lot more rolled out through here. So this fiberglass is actually a great buck to hammer to. I'm gonna get another clamp. I'm gonna grab this and just start this into a little bit of change that matches with the front fender. All right, so we have the fiberglass underneath to about here. Right about here, the fender goes in. So I'm gonna start just around this area. And I don't wanna put a tool mark on the steel. So I'm gonna bridge that whole area with this big flat bar. So I don't just punk, uh, pucker it with the squeeze on this. I think that'll hold. So uh, if I was to hit this with a hammer, sure it will work. But again, like I've done with other pieces, control is the name of the game. So you can see the radius is different. I'm gonna grab this tool and hammer right here. So I've used this before. Uh, I think it's like a brick set or something. I don't even really know, but you see it's a chisel kind of thing, but it works great because you have this defined line, right? So I can just put it right here and hit it with a hammer without hitting the phone. <laughs> you mean my professional movie camera. Yeah. So I'm just gonna set that right in here, give it a wallop. What that's doing is you don't have a hammer mark. This is pushing it. See? That looks pretty blended to me. How about you? To get a little shot to bring this back up close. Close that gap a little bit. And I'm going to squeeze this with a big pair of crimps. This is a little bit higher right here. Uh, this amount of filler to make these two come together, I'm not even concerned with that. We're going to panel bond it and rivet it because we have about that much grab of fiberglass. Right now, I'm just in the forming part of it. Get this design to flow together. Cool. That looks really good, Ian. I surprise myself every day. So we have the hem edge inside that was open, so now we're going to shove it slowly without denting the heck out of this. We're gonna squeeze it. All right, I like it. So if we could open this door, we would, but there's a whole story that's gonna happen there. I'm gonna put two temporary rivets here, uh, cause this steel is gonna stay with the car during the fabrication. The fender is going to detach for finish work and so is this one. So I'm gonna weld it along here to that. The door is a whole other operation. So uh, yeah, let's get into that. And then I'm going to make another fastener here out of sheet metal. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Let me sand this back, put a couple tacks in there, and then I'll get a couple rivets for there. I was gonna rivet it, but then I thought, you know what, if I rivet it, I'm gonna have to drill it out. So a couple self-tapper screws. That'll pin it for the time being. Okay, I'm gonna sand this real quick and then tack that in. That tool was really neat that you just did that sanding with. I've never seen anything like that. The magic finger. Check it out. It's so oh, this thing, this thing with door jams and et cetera is indispensable. It's like, a belt wow. sander, but it's a little finger. So you could put this, watch what I do in the corner here. 
So you try to use it. Cool. So uh, try to put a rotary sanding disc in there. Let's discuss. I'll even get the smallest one. This is something of your standard air sander in the smaller sizes. So watch what I could do in the corner with this. Seeing it blocked up. <laughs> How it never gets in? Mm -hmm. This thing. See, all the way in the corner. <laughs> Welding a panel like this leaves a great room for warping the heck out of it. So if you just push up with your hand and weld it, it could warp. I mean, it's always going to warp a bit, but I just hold it up with this underneath. It was similar to the bar I was using there. This just offers it a little more support. I'm just going to go down the lane. Not much heat. Don't want to warp it. Now everybody's concerned about how the door is going to swing open. Is it going to rub? It's going to ruin the paint. Also probably some concern about that big gap. Uh, if you look at the VW running board, there's actually a different gap between this quarter panel and the door gap on the running board. So there's always going to be some filler in there. What I'm doing is uh, firmly attaching this. It's never removable. So this is flat. I can feel it. There's going to be kitty hair in here. I'm going to weld it more, but right now this is pretty warm. I don't want to warp it. I'm going to create a strap to bond the fenders together, similar to what we had here, just something that I can screw in place. And then after it's all done, fasten it proper and glass and kitty hair over it. But this fender's coming off, this is staying, and that fender's coming off. I'm gonna cut, I think, an inch and a half strap, screw it to the fiberglass, tack it to the steel. Well, there I was saying an inch and a half strap, but look, that's left over. I'm gonna use that. Use the thickest part of this, which is right about there. Angle cut. Right there. Yeah, cool. I think ending right about there should be suitable. Oh, here's another cool old tool that I've had forever. I stole these. <laughs> Ian Roussel. I did. Somebody out there knows where this came from. Matt, ever seen these? <laughs> ever seen that anvil, Matt? Greg Stefano. Oh, Greg has passed. He'll never know where it was. Aww. It was a company a long time ago in a land far, far away. Oh, let me guess. In your time in uh, construction in New York? New York City. Uh, they weren't really uh, in action. This came from this came from the machine shop in Rockefeller Center. That's a hole punch? That thing is cool. Yeah. We would do copper, a lot of copper work. And we would just use rivets that big. And we would lay out all these things and we would just punch, 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 and rivet everything together. Whitney Punch, Rockford, Illinois. Thanks, Greg. 
My dad's the old boss. <laughs> I mean, is it really stealing if the boss knows you took them and just doesn't care? I wonder. But. Well, that's just going to do just about nothing, isn't it? Let's put it in there anyway. No, no, that did something. So see, this is straight and see how it curves? Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to be able to remedy. Or is it the fiberglass? That's good fiberglass. So it was. There we go. Use a little bit of this straight edge hammer thing. Send that. And people have asked what I wear when Ian is welding. And what do I wear, Ian? <laughs> well, Roussel's custom fabrication sweatshirt. Well, that. And my, helmet. my very own special helmet. I'm going to create a fastener on the inside of this later. I'll end up taking the tire off, etc. Then I could take this and create it, create that line around and filler. So there's going to have to be structure under here to step on, but I think I'll do that outside on the lift so I could stand up uh, under it. But for now, this fabrication is looking close. I want to put this on the ground because it's going to have a whole different look once you see this running board's orientation to the concrete that like really tied it all together yeah not a lot to do there but needed it to bring that line through mm -hmm. clean off the roof hey <laughs> we were looking for that <laughs> Sometimes I get frustrated when Jamie's cooking with all the dishes and the sink. Meanwhile, I'm out here like this. Yeah, what, how did you, what did you think of that sink full of dishes I left you this morning? It is what it is. The meal was uh, fantastic. But that's just part of it. When I first started in my shop, I learned in the art foundry I worked at, we would clean up our tools every day, right? Because it was this every day, 10 people working. But over the years, look at that table. It's like a pallet. But this will take me an hour to clean up someday.
All right, this is one of the coolest tools I own. When you got such a low car, you can't get the floor jack out. Check out this baby. This came with the property. Oh, yes. Ricola. How about that? Let me roll that a little bit. It'll set down the back. Get some of that camber out of the tires. Now look at that running board to the ground. Makes it look so much lower. All right, not sure which way I'll go with this next. I may duplicate the fenders on the other side and then get into the doors. Or I might just get all kind of metal shaping and do the doors. But next, definitely 40 something Chevy. It's under the tarp out there because we got some weather. I'm gonna get that back in out of the rain and continue on that. Stay tuned.